many times have you competed in powerlifting? I think I've lost count. Not that I've competed so much that it's like that much, but I would say probably like a good 14, 15, maybe even 16 comps. There was one year that I did like probably eight comps in a row. Man, how what? was that on your body? <laughs> Dude, that's why I was so fat back then. I just, I just had to eat and sleep to compensate for how much workforce that I was putting on my body. So, you know, if I wasn't, if I wasn't operating correctly, I just, I was, I was either under resting or under eating. But, because usually when you do a competition, you do like a three month prep. So you can imagine eight comps in one year. That's like, that's like unreal. yeah, that's like only two month prep, back to back to back to back. Yeah. But I mean, training with Liz, that's, she don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. like, either do it, don't do it. Yeah. You know, um, when I first started powerlifting and I did my first meet, that's, that's when the hunger came in. I was just like, fuck, this is fun as fuck. You know what, that, that, that's, a huge, that's a huge thing that I wanna talk about too because I've done bodybuilding competitions. Now, what really got me into powerlifting too is that one first comp, right? When I did my bodybuilding competition, I mean, it's, it, was, it was a good experience, but I remember going to the back room and there's a pump room. It's where you pump up before you go up on stage. I would hear a lot of guys in the back and they would be like whispering to each other, mostly talking shit. Oh my God, I can't believe that guy is even like going into trying to compete. He looks like shit. And I'm just like, God damn, dude. Like, like just that negativity, like you don't even know what that other person has went through to get to where he is, you know, right now. You don't know if he lost 100 pounds or whatever, like, but with powerlifting, I've never really seen any negative negativity in powerlifting. It's you versus steel. It's you, that's it, yeah. And, and, and everybody wants you to get the weight that you're going for on the platform. Once you go into that platform, everyone's cheering for you. And it's just, that's, that's the kind of electric atmosphere that I love and enjoy being in. That's what, that's what made me love powerlifting. Still love bodybuilding, but powerlifting will be my, my true love. Deep in the heart of Texas, there lies a gym by the name of Southside Strength Gym, led by the legendary powerlifter, Gary the Forklift Hunter Jr. And if I could add real quick, let me get out of my serious voice. The nickname Forklift is just such a badass name. I mean, mine is shy. Gary's is Forklift? Like, with the nickname like Forklift, it just makes you want to like reanalyze your life a little bit. Back to serious voice. Where lifters come from all walks of life to become stronger, proficient, and more explosive in their competitive journey as a powerlifter. This is episode one of Chasing Numbers. His Ford. What? Remember, we talked about it on the deadly party. You gotta bring your his Ford? Ford. Yeah, you just gotta do that. What's that? Yeah. 
12 reps though. All right, so today we are gonna work on my squat, which is just as depressing as my bench press. We're gonna start warming up with nothing. And just take your time setting up. Get where you need to be. There you go. Be everything perfect right now. Set them nice and strong. Control your steps. Good. Grab into that floor hard. Open. Good. Drive. Sit back into it. Open, 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 up. Drive. Better. Squeeze into that bar hard. Open, open, open. Drive. Nice. Better. Good. Rack it in. It looked a lot better, especially after the first one. The first one, you loaded into your knees so hard, you were kind of going down here and had to release into it. Yeah. After that, you open back into it. Now, one thing right now is as you're going down, or more as you're coming up, it's almost kind of like we were saying, you're so powerful, you're almost trying to roll that bar forward. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there's a common cue of bending the bar down. I'm not a big fan of bending the bar down because a lot of people, if you're bending down, it tends to overextend the chest. You overextend the chest, boom, you're going to pop an arch, you lose your brace position. So instead of bending down, bend the bar forward. So it's over your back here, think of twisting it forward. It's gonna have the same effect of locking your upper back in, but now you can't, you can't jeopardize your brace position now because of it. Gotcha. But you're gonna have to do that here because that bar's trying to roll on you a little bit too much. Yeah. We don't want you to now get over your center line because now once again, now you're fighting going forward. You're gonna work against your leverages now. So gotcha. hold that, lock it down, bend it forward, and then you're set. Don't release from there. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right, take care, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Little tweaks just here and there is all a lot of us want to come down to. Yeah, so. get that foundation down now. But right exactly, I want to do it now. We have to worry about it down the road. I want to be perfect now with it. But gotcha. like I said, we'll get to a point too where, from the, no matter what is on that bar, from the bar to 500 or 500 of the bar, you're going to treat the same. Gotcha. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. So that same kind of explosiveness, and that's kind of like initially with uh, the when I went and did this, I was like moving fast and all that, I, like in my head, it was always like explode no matter how light it is and all that. And well, and you want, all. you want to be explosive, but you want to be under control while doing it. Now, if you're trying to explode too much and now you're jeopardizing positioning or whatnot, that's always not good now. Gotcha. So we need to find that fat fine line and know what's going to be best for you. Gotcha. It's gonna suck. Perfect. Come on, each try to look identical now. Come on. Control. Settle in. Big breath, brace hard. Up. Take your time. Up. 
Yeah, I don't know what happened on the first one. Something happened on the very first one. You went over this way hard. Oh. Let's see. Ooh. Lost all your tension in your hips. Yeah. The femurs actually rotate within your hip on that one. And that was good. That was better cleanup on the second. Cool. All right, girl. Let's go down to one. Let's work us a low bar. Yeah. Yeah. Go down to one plate. Yeah. What do you baby steps with it? Try to learn it. So like with low bar, it's gonna be right below my crotch, kind of thing. Right. right. So go ahead. And... Oh. I don't want you to do it. I just want you to get the bar where it needs to go. Is the, is yeah. The so actually, what I want you to do is rotate your pinky under the bar. Yeah, change your wrist position. Take a little of that stress off your wrist. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to really emphasize, squeeze it in that bar and don't let your wrist roll. Bend that bar forward across your shoulders. Lock your hip. Hang on. Hips underneath. Hips under you. Now stand up. There. Start there. Brace hard. Now open into it. Open, open, open. Death! Looks, looks better. Again. Open, open your knees. Death! One more. Open. Death! Crack. All the way in, all the way in. Yeah. I feel more confident going lower with that. It looks better. Oh, it already looks better for what you're gonna be. Yeah. Okay. It looks a little better now. It's gonna feel weird because one low bar it's just feel uncomfortable. Tucking your pinky is gonna help your wrist because say if I was out here, look at the wrist position I have. Uh -huh. This angle right here is gonna put a lot of stress on the wrist by tucking it. It takes away some of it, so it's gonna be a little bit easier on your wrist. Okay. What is going on, America? My name is Cheyenne, and we are finally here. Chasing numbers has taken shape, and I couldn't have done this without Gary, the owner of Southside Strength Gym, three-time powerlifting Olympia, just a total badass in lifting, and you know he has this place in the South Texas where people from all around Texas just come to this little. This little gym and it's such a, it's such a great thing because it's like you know this is the this is like the definition of strength and people that want to get stronger like they it, it's a thing and you know chasing numbers is going to be an ongoing docu series of that it's going to be me in my journey as a power lifter and other athletes that are associated with uh, South Southside Strength my bad sorry Gary uh, but. You know, in this episode, we're just gonna like, you know, warm things up. Hopefully we could get two episodes out of the, a week. You know, most likely one, just depending on my shooting schedule. By the way, Chasing Numbers, brought to you by Cheyenne Kesri Photography. So hire me for any of your photography needs. Back to this. I, I can't wait to get this ball rolling. The people that have been like following me and my work for a while. Oh, there's a hair in my microphone. Huh people that have been following me and my work for a while I appreciate you for sticking in you know chasing numbers was originally supposed to be a movie or a series of like underground sports first one being the powerlifting movie and we got 80% done with that however it was missing some pieces so we are going to incorporate stuff from the original chasing numbers movie into this ongoing series which should be like a special thing um, I am going to be splitting my training between Southside strength and uh, Texas strength systems I know it's a lot of strength because there's a lot of strength involved um, and uh, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome because San Antonio without my knowledge has so many strong athletes so many strong power lifters and even strong men this project is about you know the sport the love for the sport and the athletes that are incorporated within it you know and then the details of the sport and I cannot wait to start getting going getting going on this and I can't wait to take you guys along so thank you so much if you're watching it like and share and if you're not watching it on YouTube jump on the YouTube like and share you can auto play all my videos you know just for some views going and you know, I just so we can get this going however you know any kind of support is uh, is greatly appreciated and I just want to say I love you guys thank you so much for sticking with me for so long and we're finally ready to go Chasing numbers is a thing. So right now we're 
now you just have your foot sitting there. We need you to root into the floor. Okay. So rooting more. One, well, we need three points of contact. So backside right here, the big toe, little toe, heel, always made the contact. That's the easy part. But what I want you to do is, I kind of remember since like, say we're in the sand. I was kind of grabbing the, grab the sand with the toes, we kind of do that before. Okay. So the bar we grab into it, we're going to do the same thing with our feet. So anything with your feet on the ground, we're going to do this. So to here, you can grab into it. Like with the toe, with my toes. Yeah. So you're right, it's almost like you're kind of curling the toes down slightly. We can grab into it. Notice, now I start getting this little bit of a heart that takes place here in the bottom of the foot. Does that, tracks his weight outside. So I it from here, my knee automatically gets it externally rotated, so the hip opens around with it though too. Mm. So from being flat to... So I'm like... But right now when you're going through it, you're not, you're not actually grabbing to the floor, so as you're going, your foot's just... It's rocking a lot. Okay. So you don't have you have a lot of loss of stability right now in your in your feet. Okay. So you're unstable there. Now the whole looks is not gonna be unstable because of it. Gotcha. And it starts from the ground up first. Okay, gotcha.